All right, thanks, there, Elrond. Uh, I'm very happy to uh, introduce our guest tonight, who is uh, Dr. William Chapman Niaho. He is somebody that I knew because he was down on the piano faculty at University of Lafayette in Louisiana when I was living full time in Louisiana. So uh, that's our connection. And I'm delighted that we were able to uh, uh, reconnect this evening. So, and I have here uh, volume, this is volume two of his uh, five volume series of uh, Piano Music of Africa and the African oh, Diaspora. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, oh, and look, we have all the volumes there. That's great. So what I'm gonna do- I have, I have one, three, four, and five. So yeah, we're, we're covered. Okay, and I have two, so that's great. So uh, what I'm gonna do to introduce Niaho is to uh, just read a very brief uh, bio that's on the back of this volume, okay? So Dr. William H. Chapman Niaho is an active international performer scholar, teacher, and clinician. Raised in Ghana and now living in the United States, Chapman Yaho studied at Akimota School in Ghana and the Conservatoire de Musique in Geneva, Switzerland, and holds degrees from Oxford University, the Eastman School of Music, not too far from here, and the University of Texas in Austin. The winner of prizes from international piano competitions Chapman Yaho has performed in Asia, Africa, Europe, North America, and the Caribbean. He is a regular guest clinician, giving master classes, presentations, lecture recitals, and workshops, and continually advocates music by composers of Africa and the African diaspora. And for those who might not be familiar with the term diaspora, especially maybe our, our Chinese and uh, 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 overseas students. Uh, it's people living in Africa and also now resident elsewhere in the world. So that, that, that kind of a dispersion, I guess you might think is a good, we good go. word for diaspora. So without further ado, let's welcome Niaho. Thank you, Niaho. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a real honor to be here and, you know, to virtually <laughs> and, um, and to talk to you about the piano music of underrepresented peoples in particular, you know, for my talk, I'm going to be talk, um, doing stuff by composers of African descent. And so I would say composers of African descent have up to recently been largely ignored. And I would really say within the past year, when people were quarantined at home and witnessed the senseless murder of an African-American by name, George Floyd, that America and the world, especially the younger generation, decided to stand up and take on the proclamation of Black Lives Matter, which was really a movement that had already been brewing over the years. And it's actually just timely that we, you know, such a fabulous pianist or, and, and uh, performer and professor uh, by name Robert Jordan, uh, whom I got to meet as a student in, at Eastman, should have a piano festival named after him. And I am really flattered and honored to be invited to participate in, in a pianist who I really, I think he had, he was quite a wonderful, oops. <laughs> Who, who I think was quite wonderful in um, in just talking to just a really lovely, energetic uh, young gentleman in those days when I was a student at Eastman. So um, I am going to actually talk the, about music of uh, the African continent. I'm going to um, present to you some piano music and play as much as I can and maybe limit a lot of my talking so, so we can really get a sense of, you know, the, have a sonic experience of this music, which I think is most important rather than just talking too much about it. But um, I hope it will give you an idea 
what's out there worth exploring, worth learning, ranging from easy to difficult repertoire, you know, and stuff which is worth programming on your recitals, worth advocating, worth writing dissertations on, and it, everything, and it just goes on and on. And um, there's so much of this music. So what you're going to, I'm just going to be scratching the surface of it. And I thought I would uh, use a so PowerPoint uh, presentation kind of format to, uh, to help with this. So I'm always a little uh, nervous about technology here, but we'll, let's see whether this is going to work. All right. So is it sharing now? Yep. Awesome. Okay. And I hope, yes. So in and out of Africa, and I'm using a play on the, you know, on the words out of Africa, you know, the movie, and I just thought it would be kind of fun to do that. But music, when, you, when we get to it, there are many scores now that one can find. This Florence Price, I just saw I'll show you some pictures of some of the scores I have. 24 Negro Melodies by Samuel Col Coleridge Taylor. And then there's the Salsa Nueva, which is really a wonderful set of pieces by Latin American composer Afro Latin, of which there's Tanya Leon or Erlen Wallen in there. There's Oxford University, Valerie Cabe, hers, Portraits in Jazz. Kevin Volans, who is a Af uh, South African composer, has written three rhythmic etudes, which are really wonderful. There's George Walker, Letty Beckham Alston, who wrote quite a bit of piano music and an African-American woman composer. There's Robert Owens, who wrote some sonatas and Carnival. And then Pierre Pradel is a composer um, from Guadeloupe, who's got some sweet pieces called Pièces Créoles. And um, I have actually in the books one called Pomme Canel. And then he, there's a great book by Robert of Robert Nathaniel Dett. And then there's Florence Price, whose music we are really beginning to hear. And then there's also Russell. Jamaican composer, really wonderful composer. So I thought I would go through these books, Piano Music of Africa and the African Diaspora, which you have shown just now. I'm just going to skim through them. I had, when I was um, a professor in Louisiana in 99, I went to this amazing uh, workshop in in Pittsburgh, it was called African Pianism, and that's where my mind, in a sense, was blown open by the number of composers and pianists and musicians, theorists, and who were there for this uh, symposium. And we got to play all kinds of wonderful music. I got to hear a lot of music by composers, and that led me um, to doing a presentation once in Cincinnati at a Music Teachers National Conference. Uh, just talking about this music, a lot of music which was out of print or in Xerox copies and I, and the access to it was just so limited that I gave this presentation and a presentation and Oxford University Press was there and they decided to take me on. And so I was able to come up with five volumes. Let's see. Okay, I need to. And and so we have three volumes, four of which and five which are pretty advanced and for concert music recitals, festivals, uh, degree recitals if there's some piano pianists in there who are interested in this music. And there's a hardback version which is a complete edition. And then I have 
put out some CDs which you could check out if you're looking for some examples. But I thought I'd start off on the African continent with a wonderful composer, Joshua Uzoigwe. Joshua Uzoigwe uh, grew up in Nigeria and um, studied in Belfast and he studied uh, composition as well as ethnomusicology. And it, it was upon his return to Nigeria, he was doing quite a lot of composing and in my opinion was able to really synthesize Nigerian traditional music with um, piano music uh, and also compositional techniques that he'd learned in um, Europe. And he was just, I, I just thought he was one of the, he was just a genius at being able to produce this wonderful mel. And you will hear that his music is quite rhythmic in quality. There's um, a sense that Western, mu Western African music, the style of it, you're going to hear a lot of what they would call drumistic music, where the piano is kind of used more like a percussive instrument. And so um, he's got a set of pieces called Talking Drums, and I'll play um, something from there. And he also had Nigerian dance music. So let's just look at the next one here. This is Nigerian dance number one. He's written four of them. And I think this is just a cute piece. You can find this in volume two of the anthology, but it's very, very cool. And here's another piece of his. You're going to hear um, a time signature of 19.8, which is 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 3. Da 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 And you're going to hear the piano being much more percussion, you know, percussive like. And interesting enough, um, I remember somebody um, heard this and thought this was the music of Bartok, but uh, I, I always found Bartok's music quite interesting because it really, I felt the close kinship with African, West African music. But this one, Egwo Amala, is, is reflecting a storytelling evening where when you hear this rising sequence, Da, 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 da. You know, that's where there's um, a um, response by the audience. In storytelling in West African culture, you have the storyteller giving a wonderful, weaving a wonderful story and will actually teach the audience maybe a little refrain. And this comes back quite regularly. So Egum Amala actually the word um, suggests storytelling. But you're going to hear uh, Joshua Uzoigwe using 19.8 
and then sometimes uh, a little further on he'll uh, augment the rhythm into sort of a 19-4 in the right hand over a 19-8 in the left hand and vice versa and also in canon and this can be found in volume 5 of my anthology but here's an here's an idea of it I hope you can see, I, I, can you see the, the, okay, let's see, the thing I was saying, I should. We are only seeing the, oh, the first slide right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, hold on. This is. You can you can stop maybe stop the share and then restart it. Wait. Let's see. Um, pardon. No worries. Yeah, let's see. Let's try this again. So it says share. And Great. But, oh, but every time I share it, it just keeps seems to go back. It says sharing is pause. Bring your shared window to the front. Oh dear. Well, we're seeing it now, Niaho, so that's good. Okay. Can you see that? I'll it's just kind of like... A picture of him now, Joshua. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then we saw the previous... We're seeing the previous score piece that we heard before. Okay. And let's see whether this will play. Yeah, that's it. Good. Okay. So I'll just... I'll just do it this way. Okay, so that's um, that's sort of representation of the music of Joshua Uzo Igwe. And um, moving on to another composer of Nigerian descent, Fred Onovuero Swoke, is based in uh, St. Louis. And he's quite a prolific composer, he's written a lot of choral music and orchestral music. Was written the set of um, uh, 24 etudes in African rhythm. And I'm going to um, play Uje, which is um, number three of the 24. Again, you will see the whole idea of two plus two plus three. Um,
Yeah. So uh, that's going to give you a, a little bit of a, they're very short pieces, 24 of them. The one on the right part of the screen is called Agbaja and uses a rhythm from my father's part of Ghana, which is the Agbaja rhythm. <laughs> And um, he asks different, um, asks you to bring in other rhythms. And on like that but you, you'll hear this rhythm the cowbell rhythm pretty much as an ostinato rhythm so you're going to hear in West African piano music there's a lot of um, um, ostinatos being used uh, which is very common in the drumming practices another composer a Ghanaian composer by name uh, Robert Kwame, another West African composer. Um, we were in this. We, we were in school together. He was a few years ahead of me, and he studied in in Ghana. Went to England, studied in Reading, and taught pedagogy. Ended up in South Africa and was a professor there. And unfortunately, died too early. But he wrote this really interesting piece, which. If you see the score right here, uh, it's you're going to have this rhythm. And that's also, this five um, note rhythm is very common in Cuba. It's sort of a clave kind of rhythm. And here's a piece which, again, is very multi-layered with very, lots of different rhythms going on. Let's see.
So here's just a little bit more of the score. As you can see, it just gets a little complicated. But going from um, West African music, as you can see, we're going to um, just explore a little bit of music from Egypt and the northeastern part of the African continent. Halim al Jab was just a wonderful composer, and, um, and he uh, grew up in Cairo and, and, and ended up coming to study agriculture, actually, in, in America at um, University of New Mexico. But he was a musician then already, and he ended up studying with Copeland and also had some um, interactions with Stravinsky. Um, and they really encouraged him to compose and use music of his, of his um, heritage. So you're going to hear, this is a really, you know, simple piece, but just very beautiful. And it's called Sufyan. And this you can see in, um, in the first book I put together. And this is from Mekta and the Art of Kita, Volume 2. Volume 3 is much more complicated and uses the same kind of musical language. You're going to hear the whole idea of the, um, the augmented second and the minus second in, um, in this piece. So that's one of his more sim simple works. But he's got, um, he was actually very involved in music concrete also, um, which is uh, using sounds from just the, you know, just your, the surroundings and manipulating them. So he was into electronic music as well. And one thing he talked about uh, when you hear a lot of his music, he's using a lot of ninths and seconds because he, uh, the piano is kind of a limited instrument in this, in when it comes to music from Egypt, Sudan, and places like that because they have quarter tones in their, in their music. Music is, you know, sometimes a fourth may sound a little sharp to us but it's a you know it's a very very important tone and so it's really important you know he was thinking that using these um these two notes these minor seconds would help our ear focus more on what is in between so you're going to um if you explore the music of halim el dab that's something you're going to hear another composer from egypt is gamal abdel rahim and he studied in Europe and wrote a, a cool trio, a piano trio, violin and cello, um, which isn't complete, but is available on Opus, um, International Opus. But he wrote this um, wonderful set of uh, variations based on um, an Egyptian folk song. I just think it's very, very cool. And again, you're going to hear what we would
um, there are many more variations, but so cool. Definitely worth checking out. And another wonderful composer is Ali Osman, who is now, um, he is actually from Sudan and is a professor at the Cairo Conservatory. And he's, um, he's written piano music as well as uh, music for harpsichord and other instruments too. And here's a piece that I was able to get called Afro-Arab Blues. This was commissioned by um, a pianist, I believe in Germany, Marcel Worms. And he, um, in this case, he's using um, the blues and also the whole uh, idea of, of that um, mode as well. So you're going to, and, and also he has to um, click his, his hands and say S, S, which are really some kind of um, uh, percussive um, points in the music and have all kinds of interesting significance. But here's Afro-Arab blues, which I think is very cool. I think it's I. Uh, <laughs> it's very cool. Um, I am just going to keep playing as many things for you too, and then we can hopefully at the end of the we can have more of a discussion. And then moving down the continent to South Africa, one of my uh, wonderful friends is uh, Bonganian Dodana Breen, who is a prolific composer. He's written quite a bit of. Um, piano music and also written an opera based on Winnie Mandela and choral music, orchestral music. And um, I've recorded his um, Flowers and Sand, but um, which can be found, I think, on my second CD. However, there's a really wonderful s set of pieces in two parts called Rituals for Forgotten Faces. And here's a bit of it. So uh, I had to stop this music right in the middle, but again, so 
I just put here rituals for forgotten for forgotten faces, flowers and sand, umlalo, emlanjani, isiko, which was actually recently um, premiered by Yel Weiss, who's a pianist. Um, she, um, I think, commissioned him to do this piece. And um, moving on out into the diaspora, I thought it'd be fun to play a bit of um, composer from Haiti, Ludovic Lamotte. And he actually was born in Port-au-Prince and um, ended up in Paris and studied there. He was actually um, dubbed the, uh, the Black Chopin. Uh, and, but in the end, he, he went back to Haiti and um, assumed a cultural um, post in the government and was also doing a lot of composition, wrote a lot of caprices and dances. And here's a beautiful dance, very Caribbean, called um, La Dangereuse. And it's a merengue Haitian. So as you can see, it's much more uh, tonal in quality. And the dances, are you're going to find out that the music um, in the Caribbean, you're going to hear the one of the rhythms that seems to prevail is the cakewalk, what we know as the cakewalk rhythm. But it's also uh, a rhythm that also came through West Africa and into the Caribbean and into the Americas as well. Um, another composer from the Caribbean, also Russell, Jamaican composer who uh, grew up in Kingston, studied at Juilliard um, and also in England at one of the colleges, Royal Colleges of Music, ended up um, teaching and being a professor in, at the Conservatoire in Geneva. And uh, he was just an amazing pianist and uh, composer. He and and uh, he just loved improvising as well. And so, in his recitals, he would play stuff from, uh, let's say, Bach to jazz would be the title. And at the end, you know, he, he will ask one of his. Um, the audience to name a tune, and he would probably improvise on it and bring the house down. But uh, here's a really beautiful piece called Papillon, which um, he composed. I think it's just lovely. And this is actually um, Ozzo Russell performing it. This is in volume three of the anthology. 
I hate to stop this. Another Jamaican composer who is based in London is Eleanor Alberga, fabulous pianist. And um, here's a bit of her uh, work, If the Silver Bird Could Speak. Again, she employs a lot of Jamaican um, rhythms again, um, popular rhythmic structures and gestures. goes on and then um, here are some of her pieces Jamaican medley ice flow you know, wish um, away three-day mix which is a really hot duet and two piano suite also for two piano and then wild blue yonder I just thought I, I would just um, include a piece a collaborative piece which is for violin and piano and this is just a a great piece and he, I'm just going to start it in the middle. So uh, that's just one of her, just a fabulous composer. Um, and being um, in England, we'll also deal with uh, Samuel Coleridge Taylor, who was an African British composer. His, his father was from Sierra Leone, a doctor in, from Sierra Leone. And uh, he grew up in London and was really quite precocious and very, um, just very well liked and was endorsed by the likes of Elgar. And um, Samuel Courage Taylor wrote quite a lot of piano music. Um, we have, a pian you know, 24 Negro melodies, African suite, five four scenes for the piano, three fours, ball suite, which is just absolutely gorgeous music. 
Well, I thought I would play a piano quintet, the, just the beginning. I believe this is it. <laughs> Just, just, just all this great music, just insane, um, that needs to be heard and played. Um, coming into the Americas, and well, actually just backtracking to Europe, um, other great composers in Europe were Chevalier de Saint-Georges, who wrote um, a set of uh, 10 um, piano sonatas, and he was, uh, he actually knew Mozart, and it's interesting. For a long time, um, or of late, you 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 know things will be coming out as Chevalier being Chevalier de Saint Georges, or his name Joseph de Boulogne was known as the Black Mozart, and you know it makes me, you know, it, it it's so funny because um, he was older than Mozart and. Um, Mozart actually um, learned the idea of his uh, dual uh, concertante style from Chevalier de Saint Georges, you know. So maybe Mozart would have been the 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 white uh, <laughs> uh, Chevalier de Saint Georges. Um, and also in the 1700s, the other composers was Ignacio Sancho, and and then. Um, Another interesting black composer whose music we don't have too much of, but who was also an incredible violinist, uh, was um, Bridge Tower. And Bridge Tower was, um, happened to meet Beethoven, and, and Beethoven wrote this amazing sonata for Bridge Tower, but um, ended up having a big quarrel over a lady. And um, Beethoven, you know, rededicated the sonata to Kreutzer. So the Kreutzer sonata, whom uh, we know is such a, a phenomenal piano sonata, uh, violin sonata, um, was actually written for a black, a black violinist and a composer by name George Bridgetar. So these are, these are little interesting things about... Um, how these, you know, people were in a way just canceled over the, I hate to use the word cancel, but um, just not acknowledged. However, um, moving on to American composers, Hale Smith um, was a uh, pianist, jazz pianist, and wonderful composer, and he's um, written some vocal music and piano music and all kinds of, you know, great set, a uh, great um, two piano work. But these are called uh, Faces in Jazz and um, they're for intermediate pianists. And this is just like a really cool piece, which I thought would be fun to hear. <laughs> There are 12 of these. And um, 
Now, rushing along, another fabulous composer is Valerie Capers, who was the first blind pianist to graduate from African American and blind uh, pianist to graduate from Juilliard. And uh, she's written some really cool pieces for piano, intermediate pianists, and also um, is a has a jazz trio in New York City. Um, here's one which is based, it's just called Sweet Mr. Jelly Roll. So that's um, one of a set of pieces from Portraits in Jazz. Um, and she's written one on the, uh, ah, there we go. Yes, <laughs> so the great pieces. Um, and then moving on to another f amazing composer who's really beginning to see a lot of um, attention being paid to her is Florence Price. And Florence Price, um, wrote a lot of piano music and was actually the first African-American um, to have a symphony performed in the 30s um, by the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. And um, she's got a piano concerto out um, and was probably best known for her uh, art song but and her Negro spiritual arrangements. But um, She's got an, some amazing piano music, and here is one of them. I hope it's going to play. Let's see. Uh-oh. Well, here's, here's the Silk Hat and Walking Cane from Dances in the Cane Break. Uh, the first one would have been the first movement of Dances in the Cane Break, um, Nimble Feet. But this one is actually interesting because it uses the cakewalk rhythm with its short, long shorts. Um, and this, this, the, the cakewalk was a really interesting and elegant dance, which was very popular amongst African Americans in the early part of the 1900s. And here's one that we're gonna. That's just a very tiny representation of the artistry and the music of Florence Price. Um, she's written sonatas, fantasy next, and um, just an amazing array of music, also for two pianos as well. Um, and I thought it would be really fun to play the music by Howard Swanson. Howard Swanson. Um, and this performance um, is actually, oh my goodness, oh yes. And this performance is by Robert Jordan. And, um, and this is called The Cuckoo. And Howard Swanson 
was just a wonderful composer who wrote a lot of um, vocal music as well. But he's got two piano sonatas, two nocturnes, and 12 vignettes. And the cuckoo, which Robert Jordan performs here. That's just a phenomenal and very colorful uh, performance of the Cuckoo of Howard Swanson by Robert Jordan, who this festival is named after. Since we're really past the hour, I just want to just show you um, other composers. Robert Nathaniel Dett wrote a lot of piano music, Suites, Enchantment Suite, Cinnamon Grove, in the bottom suite, and perhaps his most famous piece is the Juba Dance, um, where uh, which is here. But I think I will pat, I will not play that, um, just just as a matter of time. Another composer, Margaret Barnes. Margaret Barnes um, studied with Florence Price, and she was the first. African-American pianist to play with the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. And she wrote some great pieces um, and also uh, Negro spiritual arrangements that, you know, are, you know, masterworks for an art song. But she's written three wonderful pieces called The Spiritual Suite, uh, where you have the Valley of the Bones, uh, the Bells, and Troubled Water. And, um, the Negro spiritual was just really a really important part of African American life. And here is a wonderful performance, well, a wonderful work, which is just based on Wade in the Water. So that's um, Margaret Barnes. And then um, C 
Coleridge Taylor Perkinson was out of Chicago and um, wrote a lot of uh, piano music. He, I, I had the fortune of, of meeting him and he talked about every day writing a fugal exposition. That was part of his compositional practice. And I shall finish off with his with his um, toccata, which you can see is very contrapuntal and also employs the blues. Very, very cool piece. <laughs> So that's pretty much it. But um, other composers, William Grant Still, who wrote several works, Three Visions, Seven Traceries, Lenox Avenue, Africa, George Walker, um, Pulitzer Prize winner, wrote several works, piano sonatas, five piano sonatas, and just, so there's all this music out there and we you know I, I hope that this presentation will um just make you go look out for this amazing music which is out there on the african continent in the diaspora in the americas in the caribbean and in europe so thank you so much and if there are any few questions, let me stop sharing here. Hey, Niaho. Yes. Um, who are some of the pianists we, we just heard? We heard Oswald Russell and Robert Jordan. Were, were you playing any of those? Yeah, most of the others were me. Oh, those are great performances. Oh. Really, really nice. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody yeah. want to ask Niahu any questions or anything? You can unmute yourself or you can uh, write in the chat. Yep. Somebody started talking, no, maybe? Hi. Hi, Hi. Becky. Hi, um, thank you so much for this wonderful presentation. Um, I actually am sitting with the first right here. Oh, cool. So exciting. Um, I mostly teach younger students. So your volume one would be the probably the most challenging for some of my older students. Um, yeah. And so I was wondering if you had, you know, any direction for me for where I could go to find, um, even find even pedagogy for even my youngest students. Like I would love representation for them from the very beginning. Well, actually there's some, um, there's some music for early um, beginners by Florence Price. I, um, beginning pieces by Florence Price, really <laughs> here and there. And she, yeah, so she wrote a set called uh, a collection, um, piano teaching pieces, 
Um, and you can find this at voc um, classical vocal reprints. So that would be a good way to have some representation there. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think some of Hale Smith's pieces may work for you as well. But a, a person to check out, um, her name is Dr. Leah Claiborne. And um, she's in the DC area and would definitely be able to, to help you out there as well. Okay, yes. thank you. What is that that you're holding? That's the, the Valerie Capers portraits in jazz is really fantastic. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? This was simply marvelous. Thank you so much for doing this. It's, I know we've been immersing in this repertoire for, for the, the semester and the past semester, and it's kind of astonishing that um, we don't know about this repertoire more. So it's, it's a small step in the right direction. Thank you very much. Yeah, there's great stuff out there. <laughs> it's just scratching the surface. And Rob Deemer. Is, is right there and um he's also been you've been working on a database as well haven't you in my spare time <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so he could he could also be a great resource for you as well you know um becky as well yeah um uh, rob i think you could could you just tell us a little bit about your database well, uh, sure. Re really briefly, um, you know, a few years ago, we started uh, something called the um, Institute for Composer Diversity, and I'll put a, a, a link in the chat. And uh, yeah, we've been focusing on music from composers from underrepresented groups, including composers from Africa and the African diaspora. And I will also, uh, and so there's there's a um, uh, searchable databases. We don't have one yet for chamber, but I'm working on it. Uh, and actually in my work, along with that, I will wow. put another link in the chat uh, for a new organization that just got started last summer called A Seat at the Piano. And this is a wonderful resource that pianists should be looking uh, for for repertoire. And hopefully in the next few weeks, we may be able to uh, I'm crossing my fingers that we may be able to actually come up with a partnership between the two of us. So it's, uh, right. it's really good stuff. And, and Nyaho, I, it's been a while since we taught it interlocking together, but it's, it's uh, and I'm so glad that you were able to do this. This is a fantastic lecture. So good to see you. It's been a while. So, yeah. Nyaho, I hope that, uh, you know, when the pandemic is past tense and everything that uh, we can actually bring you here. Absolutely. That would be awesome. Yeah, it'd be great to have you. So consider this a prologue to, a, to something else. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Okay. So I'm going to thank everybody for joining us. Um, yeah, thank you for being here and for hanging out. And I hope you had a great time. Yeah. And please join us um, next Saturday at 7, where we have a long list of presenters, students, faculty, guests. Uh, some of the people you mentioned today will be repeated uh, next week, but I think we, we have we have so much more to learn. Thank you all. Have a great night.